Anyway, um, we're going to have a break for 20 or 30 minutes or something like that. I'm going to sing one more song before that, which is my grumpy old man song. Oh, thank you. Thanks. As I know I'm not really, I'm not an old man, am I? No. 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 no, no. <laughs> um, I do look older with this beard, I have to admit. Yeah, I know. But, you know, when you're on holidays, you just wear it all, hang out. You know? Anyway, I, I, I am a grumpy, nearly old man, and I, I get grumpy about heaps of things. But the thing that I most enjoy getting grumpy, and that's the sign of being old, is you enjoy getting grumpy about things. Yes. <laughs> It, it, it is about language and the use of language. I'm a songwriter, so I love the good use of words. So, I've written this, this little piece about how things are going downhill. Because when I was a boy, one was taught English grammar. These days, standards have gone down the drains. We had it banged into us with an unsubtle hand. Now it's firmly lodged into my brain. There's a million mistakes that you'll see people make. Now and then, there's an absolute whopper. So, here's a few tips to avoid future slips and help you all speak good and proper. Be sure to never split an infinitive. Don't use no double negatives And never generalise That's a rule you'll see everyone break Be clear as a bell Proofread every knig well Be more or less specific Don't be vague And avoid cliches Like the plague Now that's the chorus <laughs> It's really hard. I don't deny that it's really hard. But you know, I've, I've found over the over the years that good audiences pick it up pretty quickly. So see how you go. But if it's too much for you, just do that last line. Avoid cliche like the play. Yeah. It's incumbent upon us to eschew obfuscation and where feasible to employ the vernacular. Never use a big word when a diminutive one would suffice. And understatement is really, really spectacular. Use language that's inclusive of all men. And here's something else you should know. The use of foreign words is just not de rigueur, nor is it apropos. Be sure to never split an infinitive. Don't use no double negatives, yeah. And never generalise, that's a rule you'll see everyone break. Be clear as a bell, proofread every knig well. Be more or less specific, don't be vague, okay. And avoid cliches like the play. Always avoid awkward, annoying, unattractive, affected, alliteration. An avoidification of Donald Trumpian neologisms will strengthenify your prose vacation. If you see a mixed metaphor, take the bull by the horns and knock it right off of its perch. And vary your words variously so that you use various words. Be Sure to never split an infinitive. Don't use no double negatives. And never generalize. That's a rule you'll see everyone break. Be clear as a bell. Proofread every knig well. Be more or less specific. Don't be vague. And avoid cliches like. I mean, they're so old hat, aren't they? Exaggeration. There's a trillion gazillion times worse than just stating the plain, simple facts. Use words correctly, irregardless of what others do, to show you've got the language knack. The passive should be avoided at all times. Heed should be taken of that suggestion. And 
Now what I ask of all of you is, who needs rhetorical questions? You don't have to answer that, by the way. Be sure to never split that infinity. Don't use no double negatives. And never generalise. That's a rule you'll see everyone break. Be clear as a bell. Proofread every nig well. Be more or less specific. Don't be vague. And last. Not least, avoid cliché like the play. Yeah. Well done, thank you. Thank you very much.